I just hit the record, so it shows that I'm live here on Facebook, uh, if you're watching this live anyway. Uh, let me make sure you can hear me before I get started. I just hit Perfect. The record, so Great. Oh my gosh. Hey, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Cassandra, aka the Daily Wealth Ninja, and I'm so excited because today is Sunday. Now, a lot of people would be like, oh, it's Sunday, it's Monday tomorrow. But first of all, it's amazing every day that you're above ground, right? It has a new opportunity for you to go out there, pursue your dreams, help other people, and just do something different that you haven't, right? Hey, thanks so much for joining. So I actually am excited that tomorrow is Monday, first of all, but I'm more excited that today is Sunday because I like as if, if well, whew, let me back up. <laughs> if you've been following me for a while, you know this already, and if not, let me break something down for you. As of last year, I made the decision that I wanted to empower at least 10 people to become debt free by 2020. There is so much going on in the world right now that debt is rampant and people are struggling just to get by and mostly because of this crippling debt. The average bankruptcy could be saved by just an extra 300 to 500 dollars a month. Now, those people not in bankruptcy, how much could you how much debt could you pay off if you had an extra 3 to 500 dollars a month, right? Now I'm not saying that I can help you create that. I am saying that I can empower you to create that future. So, today's video, oh my browser just went down. It says I'm still live on the phone though, so we shall see if I can bring that back up. But in today's video, uh, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to be sharing with you something that is the only skill set I have ever found. Hey, Sherry, thank you so much for joining. It's the only skill set I have ever found that has that allows you to create your dream life without having to be a salesperson. Most people, if they want to create wealth in their life and time freedom and money freedom, they have to be salespeople, whether it's a job or a business, whatever. They have to sell. They have to sell themselves on the fact that, first of all, they have to sell themselves on the fact that they are what they want to be doing, right? You've got to sell their boss on hiring them or, you know, getting a project or you've got to sell your potential client on whatever you want to be selling, right? You're constantly selling, constantly. But this, which is Forex, foreign exchange, right? It's the exchange of currencies. This is the only skill set that you can do from your phone. You can do it from your computer. You can do it 24 hours a day, five days a week. It's a skill set that you don't have to sell. You don't have to go to somebody and say, hey, buy this thing. You just go on your phone, look at your charts. Mm, that looks good. I'm going to go on buy or I'm going to go on and sell. Simple, right? So for me, um, those, those that may not know, I, I have a full-time day job as a programmer. Uh, so that's at least 40 hours a week, usually more. Um, I have a business with online marketing, social media, and Facebook ads. And, actually, and in fact, I've actually just opened up my coaching program um, for people who are looking to grow their brand and build their business using uh, leveraging d digital marketing. And I'm also learning Forex. So I'm extremely busy. And my team, I'm seeing so much success and I, I've, I felt like I needed to share this because some people may be seeing this and thinking, it's not for me, it's too hard, it's too mathy, it's too technical, it's too much this or that, or I'm not enough. I'm, I can't do that. I could never possibly do that. I'm here to tell you that if you can follow instructions, you are enough. <laughs> you are simply enough because you are here on this earth. There's something that you are here to do on this planet, right? So take a chance and check it out, right? So I'm going to be sharing with you today some of the things that I did did for my trades today because the market's open today at like 4 p.m. Central. Hey, Anne, thanks so much for joining. So um, what I'm going to be sharing with you are some of the screenshots of my chart markups, okay? And I'm going to be sharing with you the trades that I won and the trade that I lost and the change that happened with my account that I did this in. So right now I'm going through a different phase right now. I'm, I'm adjusting some of my trading and I am gaining more confidence. And so I'm actually working in my demo account. So anything that you see on here is purely the work of myself. There is no artificial intelligence with it. It is using my demo account, which is basically monopoly money. And before I show you, I do want to say um, to be legal, of course, is that past results do not dictate nor guarantee your future success. Your results are based off of your efforts, your education, and your level of risk. So if you do have questions, please see a financial advisor because I am not one. I'm simply sharing with you what's possible and what I've done for myself. So 
let's go ahead and get started. Um, share screen. I think that's what I need. Okay, so what you see here um, are the different uh, currency pairs that I chose to look at for this week. So like I was saying, I'm doing something a little bit different this week. And one of the tools that I have access to um, is, hey, Stacy, thanks so much for joining. It's something called a harmonic scanner. Basically, as long as the markets are open, it's constantly scanning on multiple different brokers, which are basically the the electronic areas for you to be able to buy and sell these currency pairs. Hey. <laughs> um, and so it scans multiple brokers for these different patterns. Now these patterns are very powerful in the markets, whether it's Forex, stocks, or crypto. And basically there are these fancy patterns with Fibonacci and all these things that you don't have to worry about. It's done for you. It's mapped for you. It's, it's all good. So, this scanner scans them and I went through and because it was Saturday, because I started this yesterday, because it was Saturday, I went through and I went through all the all the hours and the dailies. Actually, I think it was just the hours. And I marked up the charts to say, okay, these are the ones I wanted to be look at. Let me go ahead and get a initial view of these and do some screenshots for my team. Not to give signals because that's illegal unless you're a licensed financial person and I'm not. So it's more of here's what I'm seeing on my charts, here's what I'm planning on doing for myself, that kind of thing. So this was the list, and today I took, I think it was, I think it was four trades that I got into. Two of them I um, closed half of the lots early in order to minimize my. Um, risk of loss of return. And in fact, those two trades actually stayed green. <laughs> but uh, I'll show you that here in a second. So, yes, I love the scanner too, Stacy. It's amazing. So I went through these. I'm not going to show you all of them. I'm just going to show you the ones that I did trades on. So the first one is the NZD JPY or the New Zealand dollar Japanese yen. So this one doesn't have a walkthrough because apparently I just completely missed it and didn't send it into my team's um, chat. <laughs> Oops. Oh well. <laughs> so here's what um, this looked like. This was actually the first trade that completed for the day and it was with a 1% loss. So of an account of about a, you know, let's say that you were $100, that means I would have lost a dollar. If it was $1,000, it means I would have lost $10. So um, whatever your risk level was, when I got into this, I had a 10 pip stop loss and I had 1% of my account at the time inside of that trade. Unfortunately, as you can see, um, it did go through and actually while I'm here and thinking about this, so I can point instead of you just seeing things on the screen, not knowing what you're seeing. So um, let me know if anyone has been looking at any particular trades this week, and I'll take a look a little bit later. So let me know which one's down below. All right. So like I said, it got uh, stopped out here. Actually, wait, not there. Okay, maybe it was here. So th so where the bottom of the box is, it's a little difficult to see, but there's a different color green here and different shades here. Uh, um, right, I don't know if you can tell really. But anyway, so it hit, and it didn't actually hit my stop loss down here, but because of spread, which is something that your brokers have, some of them are smaller than others and also depends on the currency pair. But because of spread, I got stopped out early and it went up and it actually would have hit my take profit, I think. Let me see. Uh, it might have. So, uh, but yeah, so that was my first trade. That it was 1% loss, which was a bummer, but I still had three other trades open, which by the way, again, your risk is dependent upon your level, your appetite risk level. So having four trades open, each one out of 1% is really high, actually. You don't generally want to have at risk any more than 2 to 3%. Again, I'm just testing some things. And because I'm learning and because I'm, I need to implement it, I'm trying to do fast trades. Still while keeping um, uh, an accurate amount of, of stop loss and everything like that to make sure that each trade is only 1% risk, okay? 
So, hey, Kurt, thank you so much for joining. So this is my first trade. Let's go to the next one. Oh, is there anything I want to tell you about this one? Okay. So a little bit of training. This right here, these pluses right here, these red and green, that is your 200 exponential moving average, I believe, on the close. This thick bar right here, and same thick bar right there, this is your 50 exponential moving average, I believe, also on close. So why is that important? Well, your price is above both your 200 and your 50, which indicates a huge uptrend, which you can actually tell by moving through the pitchfork here, right? Pitchfork, you can see it from the trend lines, all kinds of good stuff. So having both of these be below our price and both of them are green, indicating that it's also in a buy, then this is it's, and it's still indicating that it's going to go up. Now, for those who may know this indicator with the red and the green background, um, please ignore this because apparently I used them wrong today. <laughs> hey, Megan, thanks so much for joining. So uh, what else can I tell you about this before I move on? Um, there is something called quarter theory that I was using. So uh, look that up because I don't know it well enough to teach it just yet, but I plan on using that as a future topic to cover on one of my Sundays. All right, so NZD CAD, this is the New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. And this is what the harmonic scan tool that I'm using gave out. So what you're seeing here, um, I don't remember what it's called. It doesn't really matter. It just basically means that it's expected to go up. So one of the things that several of my mentors have told me is to use something called pitchforks. And so I've put them on the CD of this harmonic scanner and the XA of this harmonic scanner. So I can um, leverage this to catch more pips. Now here's why. Did it go? Oh no. Here we go. So this green line and this green line and this green line are all part of what's called your pitchforks. This white line and this white line and this white line are also pitchfork, but different, okay? And as you can see, the price moves between these channels, okay? Very simple. That's basically it. There are some rules and guidelines, like if this happens, then 80% of the time this thing happens, right? But I'm not getting in that tonight. I'm just again just sharing this with you to see what, what happened this this uh, um, this Sunday. So that was the original scan on the four hour. This is on the four hour still as well. So again, I've I've shown here your 200 EMA, your 50 EMA. Um, this whole indicator at the time, I think, is that what that one is? Yeah, but again, I was using that wrong, so you can ignore it. <laughs> All right, so and the reason why there's gonna be these empty spaces is because um, this was a screenshot including some of the take profit, stop loss, and entry points for my team who are um, a part of that community that I was talking to you about. And because it's a paid community, I can't just give it out, okay? So apologies, um, I don't want to get in trouble with the law, like the actual law, because again, since I'm not a licensed financial advisor, I can't give you advice on how to invest your money. Um, so I'm just covering my own butt. That's why I'm not trying to hide anything from you. It's just trying to be, you know, law abiding. <laughs> so, um, all right, so 50 EMA, 200 EMA, and then this yellow circle right here, this is showing that it's probably going to go right back up. Um, the reason for that is because, again, it's at the bottom of the pitchfork. And if you look deeper, you'll see some other stuff going on. This is, again, this is on the four-hour chart. So it's each candle represents four hours. We also have our PSARs here indicating that it's currently in a buy. Um, I think that's it for this one. Okay, so this is the New Zealand dollar CAD on the one hour. So it's the same thing as this one but on the lower time frame. So each candlestick is one hour. You can see there's a lot more than this one, right? But it's slightly different. The little harmonic scanner is just slightly different, but still very much um, close on. You see, again, these pitchforks, the green, the white, 
and how they move between. Now this is the, the one hour with all my indicators on it. So what do we see here? Again, 200 EMA is above and it's red. 50 EMA is above price and it's red. So right now it's indicating that this is probably a sell on the one hour, okay? Even though it's right here at the bottom parallel of your pitchfork, it's actually breaking through a little bit, okay? Uh, what else can you see here? So parabolic stars are indicating that it's a sell. And that's it for now. Okay, so the next one is the same one on the 15 minutes. So I'm not even in a trade just yet. Again, I'm, I'm looking at these. Hey, Aaron, I'm looking at these to find out the most exact point I can get of entry. Because let's say that you get in and then it goes down 10 pips because it wasn't ready for a buy yet, and then it swings right back up and hits your take profit. This has happened to so many traders, and that's why it's so important to get educated and have mentorship to help you avoid the pitfalls and learn, and learn how to minimize your learning curve. So what you see here, <clears throat> like I said, Again, the yellow circle shows that it's at the bottom of the pair of the um, pitchfork. Reason why there's two here and kind of looks like two of the white is because that's the both pitchforks, the four hour and the one hour. Those are together. Okay, so those are strong support resistance lines as well. What else can I see, tell you about this? Um, we do see a potential trend line going up. So even though this says a sell, it very well could just bounce right back up because again, support resistance. We also see in the 15 minute, this particular indicator, this is called the fast indicator. It is part of, um, it is one of the gifts that one of my mentors has provided our community. And basically what this does is it tells you, hey, lots and lots and lots and lots of different indicators all say you're going in a cell, okay? So you have to wait until the bar closes to confirm this color because it could be turning to green once that candle closes. But this is a great indica indicator to get in and sometimes even to get out. Again, not going into all that tonight. I'm just sharing with you what was my brain thinking when I was doing all this. All right, anything else? Um, I d again, this red circle here, it went to the top of that channel and then came straight back down. Again, following the laws of the charts. Now, this is what happened. <laughs> so this was a win. Um, however, I did stop myself out early, and here's why. So I got in about right here. And actually, I got in a little bit lower than that. But because of the way your broker works, they also have to take a commission and other stuff like that. It it required me to earn more pips before I could become in profit, okay? So, oh, it's not moving for me. Oh, there it goes, okay. All right. <clears throat> so, first of all, Down here, you can't see it because the screen is zoomed in, but down here is the prior low, okay? So this is where the trend has changed from a downtrend to an uptrend. As soon as the candles passed the 50 EMA and then the 200 EMA, you can see a couple of things. First of all, we see that the 50 EMA changed from red to green about where it crossed, and actually it, looked, it did it beforehand, somewhere about here. It then um, went up and through the 200, right? It went from red to green again, and it just kept going up, 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 up. <clears throat> All right, so here on this candle, let me erase that now, on this candle right here, <clears throat> I moved my stop loss up so that my trade would be in profit no matter what. So I would not have a losing trade. That means I can go off and make another trade without having to risk any of my account. Then about here where that little 
um, thing is pointing, that's when I closed half of my lots and moved stop loss to that point, which I think was right about there. Maybe a little bit lower. I think it was that one though. And the reason I did that is because you can see that this hole here, which apparently I was using it wrong, so I'm, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I mean, it, it was right, it just, whatever. So <clears throat> when I saw the hole flip, and, I, and actually the local one flipped here from, red, from green to red. So I saw it flip. And so when it flips, that's an indication to get out, or at least to take half out and raise your stop loss and all that good stuff. So that's what I did. And then at about this time right here, um, there was another indication somewhere. I don't remember exactly where, but I decided to just get out. Oh, there it is. Hole, the hole was saying red. So right here. Um, fast was saying red, I'll show you in a second, and Heikinashi candles. I did not have that Heikinashi candles here in this particular screenshot, um, but basically Heikinashi candles allow you to get an idea of trend as well. So all of those said get out, as you can see. Actually, we'll do it this way. Oh, oh it's not, <laughs> I forgot it's not on train view. <laughs> um, so right here-ish is when it was confirmed to be red here on the fast. So again, those indicators are part of being part of my community, uh, mm -hmm, being part of my community. <laughs> so let me know if you wanted that. Um, and so that's why I got out completely at that place. So I was in profit for this trade and it was about a 1% increase for my particular risk. And I used a 10 pip stop loss. Okay. The next one is EuroCAD. This is what it looked like on the one hour call with that same tool I was talking to you about before the harmonic scanner. I put a couple of pitchforks on it and um, I looked at a couple of other things like this. So let me back up just a bit. Oh, I think I went too far. I sure did. Okay. So this is the 15 minute of the same one and you, what you're seeing here, you might not be able to read that, but basically that whole triangle picture on there looked to me like a bearish pennant, which basically means it's expected to break out of that triangle, okay? Now we have the fast indicator saying, it's green, it's green, go, go, go. Now mind you, this is on Saturday, so couldn't get in, couldn't make a a play for it. The parabolic stars do say that it's a cell, but we can see that it's kind of petering out, right? Again, the 200 EMA, the 50 EMA, which right here they crossed, which means huge indication of a downtrend. Let's see, what else about this can I tell you? Oh, right here is a cross of the two different pitchforks, which is a huge energy center point. So I knew that something was gonna be happening around there. And that's about it. All right. So closer look, as you can see on the 15 minute, we have a 15 minute trend line. So if this had, cut, had broken through and retested and then come back up, it would have been a confirmation of a buy. Let's see. What else did I see here? I think that was it. All right. Hey, Abdul, thank you so much for joining. I'm great, thank you. How are you? Okay, so this was the outcome of that trade. So it's a little messy, but basically my take profit was here. And this green section was 15 pips. This red section was 10. So since I had 1% in my 10 pip uh, stop, stop loss, I had a 1.5% increase um, to my account because of this trade. All right, so what can I tell you about this particular piece here? Uh, again, the triangle in this place right here, that is the pennant that I was looking at, and I'm expecting it to potentially come out 
if you've been watching this trade, then you know exactly what it's what it's been doing. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you? Okay, so we've got the parabolic stars confirming it's going up. We've got the fast indicator confirming it's up. It's broken through this support line or trend line, excuse me. Uh, and it's past the 618, so it could potentially go back down, but uh, there are other indications that it would not <laughs> go down. All right, what else? Mm, again, the 200 is red and above. The 50 is green and below, which means indication of a trend of continuing to go up, right? All right, what else? I think that's it. So, Euro JPY. So this is what it looked like. It's a lot messier. I'm sorry. I did a lot of chart work on this one last week. Um, but basically what you're seeing here is oh, Dyson weekly channel, excuse me. Yes, weekly channel here that it was going in and out of. You see the green lines, that's the fork. You see the white lines, that's this fork. You see these gold lines, which were part of the quarters theory. And that's it. Oh well. Um, let's see, on here, oh, I know why. So I left these on because they've already been hit. So <laughs> I wasn't giving out any signals. Um, so if you see that on there, they're not signals. Please don't take them. They are old. Uh, they've already been hit. All right, so here, red 200 EMA, red 50 EMA, 200 is above the 50 and they're both above the price. The whole local was red. So again, lots and lots and lots of ideas for sell. Uh, it, has, it looks like it's possibly coming up to come back, come back and check and then come back down right there. As you, let me do this, let me make it easier. So we see that it broke through the weekly channel, kind of came up a little bit, and is in the, and looks like it's gonna go down again, right? So it looked like it did something like this, all right? All right, so that's what I was looking at on the one hour chart. Added my quarter theory lines, and you can see that they're going in between these lines, all the, all the little candles. This is the 15 minute chart. Again, 250 EMA, both of them red, both of them are high, 200 above 50, so strong indication of a sell. Sell, um, sell on the whole, sell on the SAR. So everything looks like it should be a sell, right? Oh, and then we see here now, if you're looking at this on the Euro Japanese Yen, this is actually a huge downtrend. Like it goes way, way, way past, way past, way, way, way past. And we see that it eventually comes back and taps on the 200 EMA, right? And then drops back down again. So this is an indication to me that it's probably gonna continue going down. But again, I'm not a lesson financial advisor. I'm just telling you what I did for myself today on my trades. Oh, it doesn't show. So that one I think was like a, I don't know, maybe a half percent. I think I had to get out of that. So I thought I had all the, all the slides here, but my bad. So total rounded account change for the four trades that I took today. So I seared this screenshot with my team and it was, and it was almost 2%, but I looked at the numbers um, that I actually got on my MT4 account, and it was more more accurate to say about 1.6%. So if you had been trading on, let's say, $100, um, you would have earned about 16 bucks. Um, if you had been trading on $1,000, I'm sorry, about $1.60 if you were on the 100. If you were trading on 1,000, it would have been about $16. And this was all done, I think, only in a couple of hours. Unfortunately, the time on here is off. So 8.42, so if this was done at 8.42, then this was probably done in about four hours. 
give or take. So in four hours, if you had traded on a thousand dollar account and you'd earn 16 bucks, while it may not be a living wage per se, the more accurate you are, the more information education that you provide yourself, the more mentorship that you allow yourself to have, the better you'll be, the more trades you'll be able to take, and the more profitable you will become. Now, obviously, like, um, past results are not guaranteed nor dictate your future success. I'm simply sharing with you what's possible, what I've done for myself, and what other people have been able to do as well, right? So thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Cassandra, aka the Daily Wealth Ninja. If you got value from this today, please like this video, share it with someone you feel who should hear it today. Um, tap on the live or click the subscribe button if you're on YouTube to be sure that you get alerted on my next one. And like I said, I have a free group somewhere above below this video. It should have a link for you. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. And if you're looking to have a community of traders who are focused on making sure that you get this and you're successful with it, please feel free to reach out. Would love to introduce you to the team I'm on. So thanks so much. Have a wonderful and prosperous rest of your day. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.